Hello YouTube, long time no see, it's me John Avenger once again and welcome to my last review for the month of April because tomorrow's uh, April the 30th and I'm not doing a video. This is the 1990 movie that has really held up really well, most of it. It's a Disney film, so yeah, this is the last Disney movie I'm reviewing. It's not a musical this time, it's an animated adventure fantasy film based on an animated TV series, DuckTales, yeah. Produced and directed by Bob Hathcock and from a screenplay by Alan Burnett. The film features the series cast of Alan Young, rest in peace, Terrence McGovern, Russi Taylor, may she rest in peace, Chuck McCann, Richard Lerbertini, rest in peace, R R Rip Taylor, and Christopher Lloyd is one of the only actors still alive, voicing new characters. The events of the film take place between the third and the fourth seasons of the show. The DuckTales movie, Treasure of the Lost Lamp. I really enjoyed this movie. I don't know why this was a box office flop. This is one of those Disney movies that could never be done today because of how overly sensitive people are with accents and, you know, people of other uh, Middle Eastern countries. Uh, and the movie's short. It's not two and a half hours. It's an hour and ten minutes with the end credits. It says here 69 minutes. So short, it's like a TV movie length. And uh, it's well animated. It's C no CGI. It's all hand-drawn animation from the DuckTales characters. You know, they wanted to be faithful to the show and not make it look weird. And the movie, it, the budget was $20 million and it only made 18 That is upsetting because it is a good movie. It's underrated. I think it's one of the better Disney efforts of that year in 1990, considering they had, uh, you know, uh, a year later they had Beauty and the Beast, and that same year they had The Rescuers Down Under, which I already reviewed. It's a good movie. Bombing doesn't mean that the movie sucked. This film, yeah, was released in theaters summer of 1990 when I was five. It marked the first Disney film distributed animated film that was not produced by Walt Disney Features. Yeah, the film was paired with the 1951 Donald Duck short Dude, uh, Dude Duck for its theatrical release. A comic book adaptation was released the same time. And it received good positive reviews. It deserves it. It's a good movie. Well animated, really good voice cast. A simple plot that goes really quick. It doesn't take two hours to get going. And the characters sound just like they did in the show. So it's not... A disrespect. Also, launch pads in it as well. It resulted in several planned DuckTales films being scrapped. Instead, they did the last season of the show, and then they rebooted DuckTales in 2017 with new animation. I was like, eh, it's just not the same. You have other voice actors voicing uh, Huey, Lu Dewey, and Louie, and Scrooge is played by David Tennant. Good actor, he's just not Alan Young. I just miss Alan Young a lot. And the film was good. I, I think, it, you know, I hadn't seen this movie since I was a kid. My dad rented it for on VHS when I was like five or six years old. And I loved it back then. And now I finally see it as an adult. And I'm like, I see all this hard work they put into it. With the animation and the, and the, and the backgrounds and the colors. They pop out. There's a lot of Disney references that are not forgotten about. They're in the movie and they're subtle. They're part of the plot. They're not wish where everything is a reference to this and this and that and they shove it in your face here they had subtlety that's what this script had over a movie like wish which i was i was kind to that movie only i only said it was okay it's not horrible but it could have been it's nothing this is something this was effort they said yeah they rated the film three out of five stars i would rate it like that three and a half stars on on letterbox a movie you can take your kids to all enjoy. Called the film a lushly animated, smartly scripted, wise-quacking adventure. Yeah, it's cute. It's really cute. The voice of the genie is cute. It's not as good as Genie from Aladdin, but he does his best. It has a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It deserves it. It's a classic. It got a Young Artist Award. Uh, even though I don't think there's any kids that voice the characters. Because the voices of Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Webby are all voiced by a woman. That was like middle-aged at that time Russie Taylor who I miss a lot she was the most recent to pass away the HD version of the movie is available on Movies Anywhere and Disney Plus it looks amazing they restored it it looks brand new the animation just flourishes on your face and uh, I miss animation like this I, again I know Josh is going to say oh but Disney can't go to the way they were I wish it I wish it would because I miss the old Disney whatever happened to the hand-drawn animation Disney that we love known and love from the back in the day it's gone now because 90 percent of their stuff is cgi cgi movies with live action actors cgi remakes of their uh, their beloved classics cgi cartoons it's all cg now 
Ninety percent of it is CG. There's like a hint of it that's hand drawn on Disney on the Disney Channel or Disney Junior, but computers pretty much took over hand drawn animation, and I miss hand drawn animation. And this is supposed to be a first in a series. However, after the sequels were scrapped, when they asked about the possibility of a sequel, they're like, yeah, I don't know. No, it's not going to happen now because Alan Young is dead. Rossi Taylor's gone. Half of the actors are gone. So there's no reason to... I would just say leave it alone. This is a classic that should stand on its own. Don't remake it. Don't do it in CG. Leave it alone. It's done. And if you want to see this movie, watch it on Disney+. Plus. This is something worth your time. It is not... A remake. It's not a musical, so they don't sing in it. They have the the, the freaking kick-ass DuckTales theme song at the very end credits. I was very happy to hear that. When Scrooge is chasing Dijon, the Middle Eastern guy, yeah, there's two thing problems I had with the movie. The villain is underused a little bit until the end, voiced by Christopher Lloyd, and the guy that plays Dijon, yeah, his he ha, he's a stereotype. He's he's a Middle Eastern weasel thing, voiced by a white guy. That didn't bother me because you know they, they could do what they on, they only had so much time, but it's a very stereotypical accent and it's going to bother some people. Think Miss Marvel, but not with an actor that's from that's Middle Eastern or Pakistani or Indian. Yeah, it's a bit cringe. He's like talking like this throughout the whole movie. It's very racist. So if you have a problem with that, this might bother you. It's a bit dated for that time. It's 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 that hasn't aged well. That's all I'll say. I don't think it's as as painful as some recent stuff they've done. But I think the movie is good. It's, it didn't deserve to flop. Uh, it, it's got great voice actors that I miss a lot. And, uh, you know, luscious animation that's hand-drawn, so it's none of the CGI. And uh, it still holds up, except for the Dijon character. He's going to be very divisive for some people. See, it says here, They faulted the lack of the backstory and regarded the character Dijon as a cringy stereotype. Yes, that I do agree with. You are going to either accept it or you're going to cringe. Because Disney back in the day, in the 90s, the 2000s, the 2010s, they thought all people from a, from the Middle East or from India, they sounded like this. No, they don't. Iman doesn't sound like that. Iman Vellani is Pakistani, but raised in, in a, she was raised in Canada. She doesn't sound like that. It's a stereotype. I get it. But again, it was the 90s. I can let it go for, that, for this one movie. But it's not going to be for everybody, <laughs> clearly. You hear that, you're going to be like, oh, great. It's, it's a Middle Eastern stereotype. Again... The Muppets did the same thing back in the in the in the seventies and the eighties. There's all kinds of people, guys. I know that. But give the movie a chance. Other than Dijon, who's very, uh, you know a stereotype, the rest of the movie is very fun. It's colorful. It's kid friendly. There's nothing gay in it. No preaching. It's got a lot of heart too, especially at the end when Scrooge makes his final wish with the on the lamp. It's really heartfelt and it's sweet. See it for yourself. I think it's very cute. Very worth your time. And it's the Disney that I miss dearly now. But thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Acknowledge me. And I'll see you guys in May. Okay? See you later.